Welcome to Virtual Wisdom Finance and Accounting Tutorials. My name is Peter and I'll be your host in this particular tutorial. Today, I want us to look at a business plan. So I'm going to take you through a business plan outline or what you call a template. This is simply a guide, a step-by-step -step guide in writing a business plan. So for us to be able to write a business plan, we first of all have to understand what it is. So what is a business, a business plan? So a business plan is a written document prepared by any entrepreneur and that which describes all the relevant external and internal elements involved in starting a new venture. So for any business, before you start off, you need to have a documented plan on how you're going to run the venture from scratch and how you're going to run it even after it is set up. And that plan is what we are calling a business plan. So a business plan addresses both short and long term decision making. Short term when you're starting off, long term for the lifetime of that particular business. Because in every scenario, we don't start a business that is going to die tomorrow. We start a business so that we can be in operation in eternity. We want this business to survive for long. And one way to ensure that a business survives for as long as we want it to is by having a good plan. Have a documented, something contained in writing, and that is what we are referring to as a business plan. So a business plan, in simple terms, we can define it as a roadmap for the business development. It's like a map. It will guide you step by step from how you start off to the way you run the venture to how you grow it to a bigger enterprise in the future. In developing a business plan, an entrepreneur can determine how much money will be, will be needed from new and existing sources. So when you are starting a venture, of course you need to know how much capital do you need? Once you determine the amount of capital you need, you also need to know where are you going to get this capital. And for you to be able to effectively get the capital that you require, and after getting it, you are able to efficiently utilize the funds, you need to have a guideline. That is where you need a business plan or what you are calling uh, a roadmap in uh, running an enterprise. It is very important for every entrepreneur to have a business plan. Before you even start a venture, it's very important to have this document. We're going to look at a few reasons why it is important for you to have a business plan. One, it will help you to determine the viability of the venture. Viability in the sense that before you even put your capital into that particular business, you need to determine what are the returns that you're expecting from that venture. And the only way to do this is to sit down and do some calculation. And how can you achieve this? Is by having a document. And once you determine and you find out that the returns are higher than the expenses expected to be incurred in running this venture, then you can relax and say this business is what? Is viable. It is viable because it's going to have some returns. Another thing to look on viability is how easy is it to run that particular enterprise? Do you have the manpower? Do you have the resources? If you don't have the resources necessary to run the venture, 
then that venture is not viable. And that is why you need to sit down and come up with a plan before you even start off. Another thing, it gives you a guidance in organizing planning activities. By planning activities here we mean, remember, setting up a business is a process. You don't just wake up one day and you have the business developed. You need to start by getting your employees. You need to know the skills that you need. You need to know the capital that you need. You need to know the source of that particular capital and all that. So it is a process. So for you to be able to budget, for you to be able to plan, you need a document that is going to guide you in the whole process. And that is where a business plan comes in. A business plan also, it serves as an important tool in obtaining financing. Let's say you don't have the resources, the financial resources. You don't have the money that is required to start the venture. You can get these funds from a bank, from a financial institution. You can get it from an investor. And how do you get this money? You have to convince them that you have a viable opportunity. So how do you convince them? You don't just go and argue by word of mouth. You present in writing. You present in writing. You present your business in writing. And that writing is what you're calling a business plan. Show them that I have an idea that if implemented, it is going to give us returns and any investor is aimed at making profits and getting returns and if your business is actually viable then they are going to buy into the business and you're going to get financed and that is another function of having or the reason for having a business plan those are just a few reasons or some few importance of preparing a business plan. There are many more, but I've just highlighted a few reasons. So for us to be able to come up with a business plan, the first milestone in this process is what you call a business idea. For you to start a business, you start by generating a business idea. That is milestone one. You have to come up with an idea first. Then from the business idea, that is where now you prepare a business plan on the opportunity that you have identified. Now, how do you get a business idea? There are various ways of identifying business opportunities. So in your specific area of interest, you need to identify a business opportunity. And to get a business opportunity, it can either be in form of a need or a gap in the market. By a need in the market, we mean there is a certain product that is totally absent in the market. For example, if you travel to some parts of the country and you find that there are no schools there, that already tells you that the children who are supposed to be studying needs somewhere to study. So there is a need for a school. If again you travel somewhere interior and you find that there is no uh, hotel, there is no hotel in that particular place, then it means the travelers or any other person visiting the area will need somewhere to rest, somewhere to take meals, and therefore there is a need. Then a gap in the market, this is a scenario where the persons or the customers are not fully satisfied. For example, I'll use an example of the hospitality industry. If there is a hotel and the hotels that are within the area, none of them is having a gym. Then there is a gap in that market because the people around might need the services in the gym. If you go to uh, a shop, for example, and you find that in this particular shop, they are not selling some items. Maybe the shop around your area is not selling uh, cereals. There is a gap in that market. That's how you identify 
the gap what we are saying here is that the customers are not fully satisfied we can also have the products are available but they are of poor quality maybe the person who is supplying the market is supplying the market with poor quality products you can come in and supply quality products another way there might be somebody supplying products at very expensive prices thus end up exploiting the customers you can come in and produce more quality products and sell them at a cheaper value but i'm not saying that you supply poor quality products so that you can sell them cheaply no you can reduce the cost of production so that you're able to produce those products cheaply and as a result you sell them at a cheaper price after identifying your business opportunity you need to come up with a suitable business name and this name needs to be unique this is where creativity comes in i don't expect you to just tell me that uh, i'm starting an electrical shop everybody else can do that but anybody who is creative enough you're going to identify a name a unique name for that particular business a name that is not easy to find anywhere else such that in future if you want to open a website if you want to take your business online and in the current uh, times that we are living in if business is not online then it does not exist so if you take this unique name in the website it will be very easy to refer your customers to your business they are able to identify it very easily why because your business name is unique but if you just call it electrical shop how many electrical shops do we have you search for electrical shop in the internet and you find thousands of them but if you have a unique name yeah creativity comes in at that particular point the other thing that you should put in mind you should be in a position to justify the identified business opportunity by justification i mean if you are asked the reason behind you choosing that particular venture you should be able to give a convincing reason as to why that is the only venture that you can invest in why do you choose that particular business justification you should be able to justify that for example if that place there was no hotel already you can justify that you say within a radius of five kilometers there was no any other hotel and i therefore found it necessary to start a hotel at this particular point that is a justification we have several hotels but none of the hotels is offering a gym yeah none of them is having gym equipment that is a justification so you should be in a position to justify why you think it is viable to invest in that particular business that you have chosen so let me take you straight to uh, the business plan outline or what you're calling the business plan uh, template and i'm going to use the kenya national examination council that is neck guideline so when you're writing a business plan the first pages of the business plan we normally call them the preliminary pages we have several preliminary pages and that i'm going to look at one by one that is before we start on chapter one preliminary pages come first and then you go to chapter one so let's go and check on the preliminary uh, pages the first preliminary page and which is page one of your business plan is uh, the cover page and the cover page should contain the following one is the title of the project two the presenter's name the index number of the presenter the institution the supervisor submit, submitted to and for what reason and also the date the title 
of the project in this case we are writing a business plan and therefore the title for our business plan is the business name what name are you giving to your business and remember you said the name must be unique very unique business name the second item is the presenter name you must put in your full name starting your first name middle name and then your surname then your index number will follow that point the institution which college which university are you studying at who is uh, guiding you in the whole process of writing the document that is your supervisor you indicate the name of your supervisor there then you indicate to who are you submitting this document you're submitting this document to Kenya National Examination Council that is if you're studying because this particular uh, business plan is for those I've, I'm, 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 I'm trying to el elaborate or I'm trying to guide the students who are preparing to sit Kenya National Examination exams and also any other exams and you'll be required to write business plans. We are learning how to prepare the business plan so that when you get into the field, when you get to the, uh, to the market, you're able to even prepare our business plans for your new ventures or for your new enterprises that you are going to start or you're going to open up. So you are writing these business plan, you're submitting it to Kenya National Examination Council for fulfillment of the award of, then you indicate uh, the course and also the level. Lastly, you need to indicate uh, the date. We normally have the month, you separate it with a comma with the year. The month here represents the month which you started writing this document. Let's say you started in January 2021. You write this all the way to July 2021. You're not going to write July 2021, but you're going to write January 2021. Now, let's look at a sample of a cover page. This cover page was written by, uh, there's a student here who has chosen a business name by the name Rahisi Serious Stores. The name of the student is Tom James Kenny. Index number indicated there. And this student is studying at Zedi Institute of Professionals. The supervisor is John Johnson. That is Mr. John Johnson. And this is a business plan submitted to Kenya National Examination Council in partial fulfillment for the award of Diploma in Accountancy. Then this student started writing in February 2021. There's something that you need to note here. The cover page, the elements or the content of the cover page are all written in capital letters. That is one, capital letters. That is uppercase. Number two, they are all bold. They are all bold. You can read it clearly. They are bold. Number three, there's something else that you need to note that between the various components, the spaces are equally distributed. That the space between this name and this one here, these spaces are equal. These spaces are equal. And in case they are not equal, they are somehow equally distributed. There is no way you can enter here five times and here two times, two times, two times. That is not equally distributed. But if you have entered three times here, then two times, two times, two times, two times, maybe because of the space, because they are supposed to be distributed, one at the topmost and then uh, at the bottom there. We are going to look at this later on when we'll be editing a document that is already written. But right now, I'll be showing you uh, the contents of some of these pages of a business plan. 
the second preliminary page is the declaration declaration page declaration page this is where you as the student you have to declare that the work that you are presenting is purely your work you have not copied you have not stolen somebody else's work and the work that you're presenting has not been presented in any other place so the first person to declare is you the person who is writing the document that this business plan is my original work and has not been presented to this institution or any other college for academic purposes or for any other purpose you have to declare that then when you print this document or when you print your business plan you're going to sign you're going to sign there and you're going to write the date when you after signing now that is when you take it now to your supervisor this supervisor has been with you in the whole process of writing the business plan and therefore they understand the content of your document they also have to declare that they are submitting this document to Kenya National Examination Council. With the approval, they have to approve. So they have to sign and the date the same way to any other party. So the declaration page may change depending with the institution that you're studying at or it may change depending uh, maybe with the guideline that you've been given and depending with the number of persons that are verifying the document before it is submitted. As you can see here, in this particular case, there are three people who are verifying this document before it is submitted. There is a supervisor, there is a head of department in the business school and also there is a principal of the college or the institution that uh, is included there. So we have a sample here for the same person that we looked at previously. Uh, the person is uh, Tom James Kenny, so they're going to sign there. The supervisor is John Johnson. Then they have Mrs. Angela Kenza as uh, the HOD and the, uh, the principal for this particular case is Mr. Chong, uh, Tom Chomley, Tom Chomley. So they, all of them are going to uh, sign on this particular document. So this is just a sample, but later on in my next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit a document step by step, uh, ed uh, editing of a business plan. So we have said the first page of your document is the title page. The second one is the declaration. Page three, page three. And if you notice, I'm calling them pages because each and every preliminary page starts on a new page. It starts on a new page. So we have started with page one. That takes uh, fully one page. Then declaration takes one full page. Again, Page three now is the acknowledgement. An acknowledgement, you need to appreciate, yeah, appreciate the people who have helped you, people who have contributed to your process of writing the business plan. Acknowledge them. You can acknowledge your supervisor. You can acknowledge your colleagues. You can acknowledge the almighty God for guiding you or for contributing to the process of writing so you're free to write whatever you want to write here what is important or what is key is that that is a a, a major heading an acknowledgement as a as a topic uh, or as a preliminary page the next preliminary page is dedication to who are you dedicating this document you can dedicate this document to your friends, you can dedicate it to your spouse, you can dedicate it to your family, you can dedicate it to your, your parents, etc. So again, you're free to write to who are you dedicating the document. 
the next preliminary page is the list of tables list of tables is a referencing tool that allows you readers to quickly and easily navigate to data in your project a list of tables should be generated automatically later on i'm going to make a tutorial that will help you understand how to generate a table a list of tables uh, automatically list of tables will show the tables that you have in your document and the pages at which they are located so that your readers can easily access them if they want to access uh, the tables then we have the list of figures is another preliminary page another page on its own again it will now indicate the figures that you have used in your uh, in your, your 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 particular in your document in your document and figures here might include uh, charts images yeah charts like pie charts and etc that's some of the figures i'll show you again in another tutorial how you generate uh, the list of figures automatically the other preliminary page is the table of content very important a table of content is an organized listing of your documents chapters sections tables and figures clearly labeled by the page number so this is a summary it shows the various headings summarized with your pages where do you find this particular item in your document that is a table of content again we are going to look at the table of content in detail at some other tutorial and the last preliminary page is the executive summary and an executive summary is an adequate highlighting of key points of the business plan which should not exceed one and a half pages this is where you summarize the whole document and to note an executive summary is written last it is the last thing to write why because you're supposed to summarize the whole document so after you're done with all the chapters all the way from chapter one a business plan has five chapters so from chapter one to chapter five you need to summarize that in not more than one and a half pages and that is what you are calling an executive summary so this should be the last thing that you write so those are the preliminary pages in a business plan so having looked at the preliminary pages i'll go straight to chapter one chapter one so the preliminary pages when it comes to page numbering preliminary pages are normally numbered in roman numbers so we have the title page page roman number number one declaration page page roman number two then we have acknowledgement page page number three then we have as you move like that all the way to the executive summary but now when you start with chapter one when you start writing chapter one the page numbering will now change and the first page of chapter one will be page one the second page page two page three page four etc so you're going to have the two different numbering system in your document again i'm going to show you that in another tutorial that i'm going to show you how to number or how to do the different numbering in your in your document so let me take you briefly into the contents of the various chapters of a business plan i'm going to start with chapter one and chapter one is business description under business description you are expected to write on various subtopics and as per the kenya national examination council they have given you some subtopics that you should write on when it comes to business description and these subtopics include subtopic one so if you look at these we have 1.1 1.1 here means uh, this is a chapter one subtopic one that is where it is 1.1 chapter one subtopic two 
chapter 1, subtopic 3. Okay? That is one thing you need to, you need to understand. Now, subtopic 1 is the business name. Business name, of course, how are you going to call your business? 1.2 is the location and address. If you realize these are two different items, and this is where you need to again come up with other subtopics under subtopic 2. I don't know that you're getting this. We have location and address. So you should come here and say, under 1.2, we have another subtopic that is 1.21, which is location. Yeah? That would be location. Then 1.22, that would be the address. You see that? Because those are two different things. You cannot just have one subtopic, location and address, then combine them. At least you should try to organize your work. Let your work look neat. So under location and address, you tell us where you're going to locate your business and also the address. That includes the box, pure box, you, the phone number, the email, uh, the website, and all that. Then 1.3, form and type of ownership. What kind of business are you starting? Is this a sole proprietorship? Is it a cooperative? Is it a partnership? Is it a company? Is it a limited company? Is it a public company? All that. Those are various types of ownerships. You need to research on that. Products and services. What will you be offering? Yeah. Again, these are two different items. Products. Which products will you be offering? Services. Which services will you be offering? If it is hospitality, for example, some services can be what? Massage. Some services can be what? If you are talking of products, what meals will you be offering? And ETC. We have so many that you can write on that. The other thing is justification of the opportunity. Why do you think this opportunity is viable? When we were looking at the business idea, I insisted on this. You need to be in a position to justify. Why do you think this opportunity is viable? The other thing is industry. Which industry are you going to operate in? For example, if it is a hotel, a hotel is in hospitality industry. If it is a microfinance, that is in the banking industry, and so many, then goals of the business, what do you want to achieve? Of course, you cannot just start a business if you don't have an objective. You have both short-term and long-term objectives. Your short-term objectives, tell us, what are the short-term objectives? Tell us, what are your long-term objectives? The other thing is the entry and growth uh, strategy the entry strategies and growth strategies those are two different items again tell us what entry strategies are you planning to put in place how are you going to access the market right are you going to join the market uh, on your own that is a sole trade are you going to join with a person that is a joint venture? It is a growth strategies. Are you planning to open new branches? Are you planning to uh, uh, maybe come up with new products? All those are growth strategies. That is on. That's a simple description of uh, uh, chapter one business uh, description. We go to chapter two. Chapter two is the marketing plan. And you see, in each and every, we are calling it a plan because we have not started marketing. We are planning. We are putting things in writing so that later on we can start working on them. So again, in chapter two, so we have chapter two, subtopic one is customers. Tell, about your, uh, tell us about your customers. Who are the people you'll be serving? 2.2, market share. What market share are you planning to, uh, are you expecting to get in the market? Of course, the other players, you cannot, unless if you're doing an invention, yeah? But most of the times, you find other people in the market. How are you planning to get a share in the market? Competition, who are the people that you are going to compete with? How is the competition? Is this safe or uh, are there competitors or no? You can tell us more about the competitors. Promotion. Method of promotion and advertising. Promotion, you can have some road shows. You can have some uh, 
advertising advertising you can have some adverts on radio television newspaper right social media marketing and all that pricing strategy how will you be selling your products are you going to sell them cheaply expensively it is it if you're going to sell them cheaply why why do you choose a, that kind of a pricing strategy maybe you're going to use what you call psychological selling instead of uh, writing a product is selling at a thousand you write for us 999 so everybody be seen that it is 999 not 1000 that is another pricing strategy sales tactics how are you going to increase your sales volume you can give people gifts buy two get one free that is a selling tactic another thing the distribution strategy how will the products reach your customers will you be selling to them you can have door-to-door -door delivery nowadays if it is in hospitality industry we also have we even have uh, 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 something like global yeah that's just an example where they do delivery for the products yeah you order online and it is brought to your place that is another way of distributing your your products we go to chapter three organizational and management plan under organizational and management plan this is where you tell us about the workforce about the human resource about the people the people who will be working for this particular organizational business and the subtopic 3.1 chapter 3 subtopic 1 that is organizational structure tell us about how will the structure be if it is a company maybe you have the ceo then you have several managers several supervisors then you have people at the lower level draw that diagram you can have the pyramid on the organizational structure tell us about the managers and the qualification you can tell us about the supervisors managers yeah align managers and all that branch managers personnel number and duties how many people do you need what are the duties you can even come up with a table at that particular point recruitment training and promotion what are the modes of recruiting are you recruiting internally externally training how often will you be training your people promotion how will you be promoting them other thing is remuneration and incentives remuneration is the salary how are you going to pay them you can even come up with a table showing that these people are grouped in grades grade a b or in whichever way such that each grade is having a different salary incentives these include some benefits you can be giving your people some bonuses you know some commissions uh, when they achieve targets and all that then the 3.6 licenses permits and bylaws what license do you need to operate in a business there is no business that operates without a license right if it is in hospitality for example you need a business permit that is one you need uh, uh, to get documentation from a fire section because you're cooking you're using fire in that particular place right you also need uh, something from the food uh, and poisons board or something you know those are some of that bylaws what are the rules what are the conducts that would be guiding your people at place of work put on that support services in most organizations you may not be able to run by yourself yeah you cannot rely on yourself from scratch to the end you need support from other parties and nowadays we have organizations that don't even hire on them on their own they get organizations that do hiring on their behalf that is a support service if you need some insurance insurance is getting you're getting it from another organization you're not insuring yourself that is a support service if you're doing distribution using a distribution uh, supply chain through another company that is a support service you need to write on that we move to chapter four chapter four is operational or the production plan you cannot have that you realize that here i'm using a stroke why it is either operational plan or production plan operational meaning your business is a resale business you buy and sell that is operational production plan meaning you are making the goods yourself right 
you produce them and therefore you have a production plan so if you're making the goods or you're producing the goods yourself or the products then you have a production plan if you you you, you are you're buying and selling the products that is an operational plan the subtopics include what chapter 4 subtopic 1 4.1 product or service design and development so tell us tell us more on how you'll be making your products if it is operational you can tell us how you'll be obtaining your products right who will be selling your products from maybe you're importing them from which country from which supplier etc then production or operation facilities and capacity what are the production facilities maybe you need some machinery tell us about the machinery tell us about the process of those machineries then tell us about uh, uh, the operational facilities if it is a resale business which facilities do you need maybe you're living with perishable goods you need some refrigerators right you need some, an office you need some furniture those are facilities right you also tell us about maybe you need a warehouse that is a a facility what is the capacity of the warehouse it is the other thing is production strategy a strategy is a, a means of reducing the cost or a strategy is a mechanism or a process that brings about effectiveness and efficiency in running a business or in making an operation so in the production process how will you make it more effective you can tell us about how you're going to reduce the cost of production if it is a in operation you can tell us how you're going to reduce the cost of operation again how maybe by reducing the manpower maybe by hiring few people maybe by getting a uh, skilled manpower so that they make less mistakes and therefore less wastage and all that then production process how will you be making the products that is the production process from stage one to the last from the time you get the raw materials if for example you you're producing sugar from the time you get sugar cane from the time you get sugar cane from uh, the farm and you make sugar as an output you need to describe that whole process if it is an operational plan you can tell us how do you get your products from the suppliers tell us about the supply chain how do you get the products how are they approved until the time they reach the customer? How you do you break the bulk? How do you uh, repackage the product? ETC. Regulations affecting the operations. We don't operate in a vacuum. We have laws. We are governed by the laws of the land. So you need to ensure that you're operating within the regulations, within the laws. So what laws are there that are affecting your operation? For example, at a times like this when we have a pandemic we have some regulations like you cannot operate past some a particular time because we have curfew hour right so such particular uh, regulations are affecting operations put them there then equipment and materials what are the equipment that you need in the whole process like i've said if it is an operational if you are reselling maybe you are dealing with perishable goods you need an equipment like what a refrigerator if you're talking of materials what are the raw materials in the production plan write on that tell us more on that so we go to the last one chapter five chapter five money matters the financial plan because you said for your business to run you need financial resources very important so under these subtopic one chapter five subtopic one is pre-operational costs pre-operational cost here refers to the costs that you incur before you start operating before you start running the business for example acquiring the premises that is a pre-operational cost for example paying goodwill goodwill is a uh, uh, when maybe somebody has given you a place where they were operating before right you pay them a goodwill for that particular venture if you pay a goodwill that is a pre-operational cost acquiring the licenses that are required it is pre-operational you have not started operating another thing estimation of the working capital working capital is a comparison between the liabilities and the assets and here we are talking of current assets and current liabilities right and this way you obtain the net working capital by lessing 
the current liabilities from the current you need to understand what these are again i'm going to teach you in another tutorial where i'm going to describe or, or or to explain in details on what is contained or what is working capital what are assets what are what is uh, current assets what are current liabilities i'm going to describe that clearly in another tutorial then the other thing is preparation of a cash flow statement or have what you call cash flow projections cash flow you need to tell us how much have you spent in the process that is cash outflow whatever you have spent then cash inflow is whatever you are expecting to receive how much what are the returns expected from this business and at any given time for the business to be viable the cash inflows must be more than the cash outflows you need again to understand the whole thing the other thing is preparation of a performer income statement and a balance sheet you need to know how to prepare a balance sheet you need to know the balance sheet items and you need to prepare a balance sheet as required there is a standard in making a balance sheet know the format of a balance sheet know how to prepare one and then make one for the business have the liabilities the assets uh, the capital all that put together to come up with a balance sheet again i'm going to teach that later on the other thing you need to calculate the break-even point break-even point a break-even point is a point where the returns equals the cost that is you have not started making profit if it has costed you 10 million to come up with a business the moment you recover the 10 million we say you have broken even you have only recovered the cost but you have not started making profit so that point where you recover that point where the returns equals the cost is what you're calling what the break-even point you need to calculate that the other thing is calculation of the profitability ratios you need to compare your assets and your liabilities you need to compare the returns the capital employed and all that like you normally say that at any given time your current assets should always be more than the current liabilities that is the ratio of current assets to current liability should always be two is to one reason being current assets is what you own is what belongs to you current liability is what you owe other people that such that if these people come claiming to be paid you can pay them and remain with a similar portion you can imagine a scenario where the ratio is one is to two yeah these people come claiming you only pay half of them what will happen the business goes bankrupt and that is why you need to calculate what the profitability ratios you need to understand again how to calculate those ratios the other thing is desired financing what are the sources of finances that you are expecting where are you expecting to get your finances from are you expect are you planning to get a loan are you planning to get uh, to be helped by family are you planning to what are the sources of financing then proposed capitalization now after you have identified your source of finance here you need to tell us now show us the figures that i'm going to take a loan two million i'm going to invest my savings of another four million to make it around six million so that is debt and the other one is equity equity is what you contribute to the business debt is what you borrow that will give you what the total capitalization so again here you have to include figure so you realize that in this uh, chapter that is financial plan there is more of uh, figures there are more of uh, figures and uh, financial statements so again you need to read more you need to research on that so that you're able to come up with uh, good uh, figures on that particular area that particular area so having looked at that those are the various chapters of a business plan so it runs from chapter one to chapter five then after that you have to include references references this is a recognition of the work that you have borrowed from other people to avoid plagiarism at times you may get some content you have copied a content you have pasted in your 
document and you have uh, uh, got it maybe you've gotten some information that was written by someone else you have added it in there you need to recognize that person you need to appreciate them for doing that work by referencing them so you put them under references and references page is updated each and every time you get the information don't wait until you finish writing the document is when you start uh, updating the references no you update you get a content put it down you get a content put it down and you arrange them in order in which you get them. If you get a content in chapter one, then its references should be the first one here. Another content you get it in chapter three, it should be following. You should not have the one in chapter three come, come in before the one in chapter one. No, you align them. You put the references. Yeah, you put the references and you normally use APA referencing. APA referencing. Again, I'm going to show you that later on. How are you? right on that that is a page on its own it's a major uh, heading and you can see i put it in capital letters centered it's another heading on its own another heading is the appendices appendices in simple terms and we call it attachments yeah what else have you attached to this document you may decide to attach one a business logo that is a photo of the logo or an image that will be your appendix one Appendix 2 can be a map location for your business, right? Business premises. Another thing you can attach is what? Anything. So if you have attached some documents, if you you if it is, you find some documents critical that they must go hand in hand with this document, then you put them under the appendices. Put them under appendices. That's where you have appendix 1, appendix 2, appendix 3, as many depending with how many you have that but again it's a major heading on its own page on its own page and uh, with that i'm done with the business plan and this was virtual wisdom finance and accounting tutorials i hope this content was useful and if it was kindly do me some favor by clicking on subscribe kindly click on subscription button appreciate the work that i'm doing by subscribing to this channel don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can be notified anytime that i upload a new video anytime that there's a new video you'll be updated if you click on the bell icon like the video share with your friends and leave a comment I'll be checking and I'll be responding to your comments. Any comments will get responded to at any uh, time you have written them. Kindly don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That is the only way you can promote uh, the good work uh, that I'm doing. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Peter and I was your host in finance and accounting tutorials thank you thank you thank you once more